Hey, it's Gabriel, and I just had a fascinating conversation with Jacob, the CEO and co-founder of Kinesis Labs. They're launching Demos, which is kind of like a railway, which allows for interchange interoperability. We had so much to talk about. He kind of gave us the alpha. He gave us a little bit about what they're up to, where they're at, and why you should keep your eyes out on Demos. And if you're building, go ahead and check it out and build on Demos. Good morning. We are live here at the Gen Zio Media House here at Denver. And I'm sitting here with Jacob, the CEO and co-founder of Kinesis Labs. And they're working on some really cool stuff with Demos. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Really great to have you. Really excited to have you here for the podcast. Tell us what got you to start Demos. Good question. So we kind of anticipated and we saw the problem with fragmentation in within Web3. So we realized that even centralized technologies like blockchains, they operate in isolation. So there's mm -hmm. many silos, right? And you kind of stick where you feel comfortable with. So there's the BTC Maxis and Solana Box and all those groups kind of focus and hang and, and remain in those silos. And it's very tricky for them to actually move between those silos and start operating in a multi-chain mm -hmm. kind of a environment um, there's this still this huge fragmentation and uh, with fragmentation comes frictions and mm. those frictions actually make that people because of many reasons stop wanting to try and they don't bother anymore and they kind of remain within their realms mm. so that is actually what moved us into creating a solution that would bring all chains together and all webs together in one place when it uh, when it comes to interoperability data abstraction and uh, yeah I mean that's that's uh, the, the reason why we... interesting so you're talking about friction and fragmentation so can you define what those are specifically in this case yes absolutely so fragmentation uh, you know it's really this type of uh, silos and, and cohorts that operate in an independent way, independently from each other. Mm. This you can see in different levels. You know, if, if you go into a more granular level, you'll see that also users, they have to operate not only with multiple tokens, with multiple wallets for each chain, also different token standards, but as well, the user experience is different uh, between all those chains. And it takes some effort to actually become aware and to become savvy to operate with, with these uh, multiple tokens, UXs, knowledge bases across different uh, cohorts, right? Mm. So this is kind of the fragmentation that creates friction. And, and that friction, basically friction is any type of obstacle that if you add more features, this friction becomes bigger and that creates this barrier to mainstream adoption. Right. So, so then how does demo, so that's why I feel like where demos comes in and how does it bridge, how does it, you know, allow for interchain interoperability or? Yes. Yeah, so, so demos allows for interactions. Yes. Interactions like across blockchains that would be cross-chain interoperability. Mm -hmm. We allow also the data abstraction of, of all that information data uh, mm -hmm. in, in one place. And we took it to the next level by allowing also Web2 data abstraction and Web2 interoperability. Oh, interesting. So basically at um, the core of the Demos ecosystem, you have the Demos blockchain, mm -hmm. which is uh, what powers, uh, gives Demos the, the capabilities and features that are only unique to Demos. And to do that, uh, we actually had to create an entire agnostic chain using, like we didn't fork it, we didn't clone it. It's basically from scratch, we had to build an entire chain using TypeScript. And the reasoning behind choosing TypeScript as a language for a blockchain, which is uh, a, a very crazy for- uh, Sounds like it. Yes, it is. For, for many developers, uh, it would be uh, just like a tedious, so tedious work to start that they wouldn't consider it. But the reason was that we, did this so that we could onboard and welcome as many developers into the Demos SDK and the Demos ecosystem, which would be a, a gateway to Web3 mm. without them needing to have previous Web3 experience. So they will be able to use the libraries that they're comfortable with and using the methods that they have been using for all their career to build apps. 
and we wanted it to remain this way because that's a huge way to remove frictions is like I let you I let you build the way you're comfortable building because you just connect to the demos SDK in order to create a universal decentralized application and then your application becomes compatible and it becomes basically native web3 with all of our 1200 EVMs uh, under 30 non EVMs at the moment but we have the main ones including Bitcoin, Solana, Ripple uh, Multiverse X, we recently integrated on. And that means that your app becomes compatible with those without you having to dig into, you know, become a Solidity expert. But if you wanted to actually reach to Solana for, uh, or maybe leverage uh, some of the protocols or any of the strengths of each chain, you don't have to become an expert in Rust, for instance. You, you just build the way you can with the libraries that you know and your app is compatible with all those chains, you can fetch Web2 data directly on chain wow. or anything with an API. So you can leverage Web2 services as if they were native Web3 with the least amount of effort and extra time to become an expert in, in different niches of uh, Web3. Wow, fascinating. So is this the CCI that you guys talk about? Uh, CCI is very important. Uh, it's great that you mentioned it because CCI is uh, what we call the cross-context identities. Mm. Well, in fact, it stands for, at a deeper level, cross-chain identities. But cross-chain identities, basically, you being able to connect to, to demos, you then verify that you're the owner of, let's say you have uh, 50 assets across 20 blockchains. You will be able to verify and prove that you're the owner of all those assets and all that on-chain activity which kind of creates an on-chain profile for you, unique to you. But we also allow to connect, for instance, this week we integrated a GitHub uh, verification, identity verification, which means that you will be able to, on top of proving that you're the owner of all those Web3 assets and on-chain activity, that you're the owner of the repository that has you know, a certain number of repositories with so many stars and has been cloned so many times. So then you start creating these blueprint and identity that spans across blockchains and web2 we within three weeks give or take we're gonna add x.com uh, email plus other ways of verifying and logging basically to the demos network fascinating wow um this is really really cool so what are some other aspirations of demos Good questions. We have many aspirations. We, we would love to build a lot of the application and use cases that we have seen. And sometimes we're very deep into, into the tech we're building and into all the features we're developing and rolling out. But some users actually, and, and some partners, they open our eyes and make us zoom out because they, they ask, can I build this or that with demos? And, and we get an aha moment and like, wow, yes, you can. And, and I hope you will. And sometimes we get this, like we, we get this kind of uh, infection of, of uh, motivation and we want to start building those solutions and applications but we have to remind ourselves that we we have a we have a goal and kind of a responsibility to build those tools and and those uh, that fundamental layer as good as it gets because we're a good analogy would be like we're we're building lego blocks so we might have to make sure that the lego blocks are seamless they don't have errors defect mm -hmm. we want to build you know the truck or cool <laughs> right, box right, right. but we have to let the cool kids take those legos and build what they want to build we can suggest them like would you like to build a truck sometimes they're like no nah, i want to build a plane and it's like oh that's cool as well interesting but first we have a we have a lot of priorities that we have to finalize so that we can actually start using demos to build a more cool things that we like to see fascinating um how can people get involved and start building with you guys oh absolutely that's a, a good question as well we are welcoming we're very keen to look for partners that are building uh, compelling and, and innovative solutions that perhaps is missing the gap that they're not they haven't found the infrastructure to make it work, communicate seamlessly between blockchains or maybe with Web2 data, right? Mm. So right now we started our testnet in January. We're rolling features on a weekly basis and we would love them to come try it out, uh, participate in the, with the weekly tasks that we are uh, providing to the community and also testing uh, if demos is something that would actually allow them to close that gap, uh, unlock that uh, 
obstacles that they have been experiencing and also you know like give us ideas and and explore synergies and collaboration yeah right so your users kind of become your partners yes absolutely very cool we we as infrastructure is sometimes difficult to to show what you're doing in, in practical terms you know sometimes often people ask you like what what's your app doing like we're not doing an app we're, we're doing we're doing the meta railway we're basically creating a solid railway that has a standard size for blockchains to communicate to send their data over their over our meta rail road basically railway mm. with their data being trains right so we we have to use we have to leverage projects building on demos or using demos to complement the projects in order to show what demos is capable of doing and, and the possibilities it unlocks for you. Interesting. How does this compare to like ICP? Uh, that's a really good question as well because ICP, we, we do what ICP does, mm -hmm. what you can do with ICP, with demos, but we are just cheaper we are not centralized, so you won't okay. have any definity kind of having to give you permission gotcha. to, to do what you want to do. Because we are open source and privacy maxi, so we, okay. we will have all the code base open and, uh, and we want to allow people to build things without having to ask our permission and without us having to, you know, like being able to stop it or intervene. Interesting. Tell me a little bit more about CCI. CCI is very important in our opinion because it's a way to give you an identity across all chains and across webs this doesn't include only web 3 and web 2 because we are future proof we allow future contexts perhaps private networks new revolutionary networks to be compatible and and for demos to actually expand in a seamless way there we believe that cci is important because identity is one of the main issues that don't allow for mainstream adoption People have to, you, you know how it is with Web2, you have uh, 20 different accounts with 20 different usernames and passwords mm. in order to operate in an efficient or, or like frictionless way uh, in Web2. So add on top 100 wallets, hundreds of wallets uh, for some savvy Web3 users. Two, three wallets is sometimes too complex for Web2 users and having to actually swap between emails and finding like the account that has been verified a certain platform that is a big friction point so we want to use cci in order to give you a universal identity mm -hmm. but keeping keeping it as decentralized as it gets so that you get to we we get to democratize also voting systems participation systems that you can actually participate in as many events and in many projects uh, happenings without you having to get that big hiccup and and fiddling around what to use how to get validated like, that you have everything in one place where not only allows you to go steps further but having these identities with all the on-chain activity and off-chain activity and badges, NFTs, it's a hybrid that will allow you to create a meta identity that will be very valuable for partners, mm. for clients that might want to use that data, for instance, because if I have a group of people where I know have certain amount of assets, which could be collateral, and they have certain amount of activity, you know, like if you are a developer and has a very cool repositories that have a lot of eyes on it, I know that you actually have like a degree of work capital and mindshare and also financial assets. I, for instance, could be interested because I provide loans. I, I am making, you know, the centralized uh, lending or we, there's so many business models that haven't been unlocked right. just because of those frictions that we discussed that we are unlocking. So. We're very happy to see some of our partners are, are building in beta cool proof of concept and similar to um, InfoFi and different ways to leverage all this capital that is not precisely financial, mm -hmm. but it hasn't been extracted and exploited. Right. Yeah, you mentioned lending. Um, yeah. What are some other, for anybody that's curious, that's watching this, that's thinking they want to build something, but you know they 
they're unable to yet and they want to play around with this, what are some use cases that you think um, that come to mind that you think are, you know, due for um, playing around with or? Yeah. So there's so many that I have, I haven't even unlocked uh, mentally. I have, <laughs> I have been exploring them. Uh, but there's so much capital that hasn't been able to be uh, materialized. Mm. You know, like there's so many people that are, perhaps they don't have capital, but they have like a huge social presence. Or they have, a, you know, now, now we have been hearing about Mindshare, right? And all this, all this data, all these interactions that happens in social networks, for instance, has huge, a huge impact on uh, certain economic activities and uh, technological activities that we could uh, get started. So some interesting projects, they have already been capitalizing and exploring into ways of monetizing that, right? you will be able to you know prove that you have a, a certain profile uh, and that you have actually a certain kind of uh, combined capital that has been created from the interactions on chain plus social networks contributions to for instance code and to on an individual basis and for other projects that once you combine all these will make sense for certain business models that are doing, you know, like perhaps uh, GameFi. They're companies that are not creating one game, but that they are leveraging all these uh, networks and cohorts within the gaming ecosystem and the universe that they will be able to, you know, capitalize on guilds and, and guild-like uh, kind of interactions between them, plus adding a social element to it because for instance, we, we at Demos, we created a modular chain. We, our architecture is highly modular. We did this so that you can keep it as lean as you want. Mm. If you don't need all the extra features, you can just like go to the basic uh, Demos version, right? But we have a PQC module, for instance. Uh, we have uh, privacy modules. One I'm very excited is that we, ex we uh, integrated the Fediverse, which is a... Uh, basically the centralized uh, protocol to create the central networks powered by ActivityPub. And a lot of Web2 companies, uh, such as uh, MetaThreads, even blogging uh, services like um, WordPress, they integrated uh, this Fediverse, right? So you, you can create the centralized networks where you actually keep your autonomy uh, you don't get banned like uh, people used to be banned, you know, if you didn't say the correct thing or you didn't align into a, a political view or uh, any type of alignment, you could be banned, right? Like you could be basically stolen all your, the, the capital that you created. So the Fediverse basically allows you to have a, a decentralized social network mm. and demos, you have this model which is pretty cool because you can add the social network element to whatever decentralized app you're building, right? So that's what, where all this capital that I talked about that hasn't been finding right. a form right. can actually start playing into very different ways uh, that could create even more value. That's so cool. Yeah. Very exciting. So just to wrap up here, where can... So you're launching the testnet. You let testnet is launched and then yes. you guys are launching officially um, in the next couple months. Right. Yes. So we still have to continue our test net. So we're going to go into a beta uh, working towards rolling out all these features. Uh, we still have to finish our audits. Okay. Uh, but tentatively, we're looking for uh, the main net in the second half of uh, this year. Super exciting. Yes. Okay. So guys, you heard it here. Got the alpha. Keep an eye on demos. Uh, keep an eye out for that launch and let's, let's get building. Yes, absolutely. Uh, pleasure to be here. People, if, if you want to check us out, you can check uh, our website, demos.sh. And our Twitter is uh, demosxyc, without spaces in between. Amazing. Jacob, Excellent. really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Pleasure. Brought to you by Hedera and Foresight Ventures. Hey, what's up? But it's not something Gen Z is afraid of. If you want to survive, you got to build a house. How do you know? You do not understand. Three, two, one.
Ladies and gentlemen, the back of the Gen Z Media House. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us today.